Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Thursday, December 1st, 2016. Holy crap, if you can believe it's already December. Time has literally just flown by. Lots to talk about. Let's jump right into VR. Start with the preamble. My audio uh, capabilities. So, I had probably the worst do-it-yourself shock mount ever designed because it did absolutely nothing to mitigate, reduce, whatever word you want to throw in there, bumping my desk, using my mouse, keyboard picking stuff up, putting it back, nudging it. It was just horrible eardrum exploding noises that would result. So I basically was reduced to using my mouse on the top of my tower with a mouse pad. It was just all jerry-rigged for stupidity, really and me delaying the inevitable, which was either watch a YouTube video for a quality DIY or just break down and buy yourself a damn shock mount and boom arm, which I did. So I can actually use my desk now, mouse, hands, everything, nudge it, and it's all still good. So that is a bit of a relief because uh, audio stuff probably more than anything irritates the snot out of me when I screw it up. All right, next preamble, The Gallery, Call of the Star Seed. It's a game uh, I featured in my Quick Look series. Any Oculus Touch users out there who are curious about it, check that video out. I will include a link for that and a couple of other uh, games that I'll talk about in a minute or two in the description below. It's going to launch December 6th, so basically Touch is launch day. And then lastly in the preamble, The Climb is going to issue... So Crytek is going to issue a free Oculus Touch update that's going to add a new Arctic mountain uninspiringly called North. <laughs> so I kid you not, that's the mountain name. It is North. At least it's appropriate, right? First news piece, 10 Steam virtual reality games for the HTC Vive that they've confirmed they being Upload VR, work with the Oculus Touch. Now, there is still an embargo, guys, on the Oculus Touch, so they're not really reviews. They don't really get into the details. They simply stated that, look, there's an embargo, and we can't give you the specifics. What we can say is with the Touch, these games all worked well. That's all you really need to know. I'm going to have the list up right now, but you can see the titles. I'll just read them quick. Tilt Brush. Google Earth VR, which I know a lot of Rift users were waiting for, The Lab, Onward, Audio Shield, Accounting, Thrill of the Fight, Hollow Point, and this next one, guys, Raw Data. If, even if you dislike wave based games and you have a Rift, you owe it to yourself to give this a try, provided, granted, it's on discount. Uh, pick it up. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. It has all the polish of a full-blown commercial game from an indie dev. It's been pretty damn stable from day one. It's got a lot of content, and it rises above just being a wave-based game. There's tower defense elements. There's movement required. So unlike Serious Sam, where you're stuck on one pivot spot, in raw data, you need to move around to be successful. So all of that combines just for pretty much still, I guess Doom 3 gives it a run for its money, but my second favorite virtual reality game. Next news piece, there is an awesome list up on Upload VR, a list of 50 science fiction books, so SF books featuring virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, for any kind of child of the 70s and 80s, Gen Xer like myself, if you were at all into cyberpunk, you would have had to have cut your teeth on Neuromancer from Gibson, which is really the prototype. There were other books. There's other inspirations for what would become cyberpunk, but his is probably the most pivotal, I would say. And you know what? It kind of amazingly holds its own still. Even with all the things out that it once predicted would be out, it's still it's still a pleasure to read. And I usually will go back and reread it 
once or twice a decade. I like it that much. It also spawned a uh, game on the Commodore 64. That wasn't too bad, but definitely that would be a must read. You know, if, if, like I said, you're into cyberpunk. Now there are so many titles on here. Most of these I read as a teenager in my twenties, my early thirties. There's just some good books here. Now, one that I haven't read, but Exidy from my Friday Night Gaming Shows, my best bud, he recommends highly the author Charles Strauss and his book called Accelerando, which he says is all about the era of post-human where AI has surpassed the limits of human intellect and biotechnological beings have rendered people all but extinct. And then, of course, Snow Crash from Neil Stevenson. Again, like Neuromancer, just critical for virtual reality, internet, metaverse, etc. Next news story, this one, you know, a bit more of an anniversary. It's virtual reality experience 360 called Remembering Pearl Harbor, and it's for the Vive, so it's Think of it as like a documentary experience. And it's ahead of the 75th anniversary, uh, which will be coming up December 7th, the attack um, by Japan on Pearl Harbor, which what really makes this a touching experience, according to the author, is the fact that a surviving uh, soldier, I believe he was in the Navy, and his name is Lieutenant Jim Downing, narrates it. And you start off in an American house, you know, of the early 40s. The decor, everything, like the furnishings, everything is as it would have been in the early 40s. There's even magazines that you can pick up and thumb through. That's the first half of the experience. Then the second half of the experience is the aftermath of the attack. And in other words, you're checking out and experiencing what Pearl Harbor looked like post-attack. So really powerful, uh, just amazing that, and I don't need to beat that, you know, like a dead horse again, but that's the kind of thing that would just stick for students. In school, we learned about Pearl Harbor, but had it been done with like a VR experience like this, so much more effective and powerful, in my opinion, even though imagination is a hell of a good tool. Next up, Slight of Hand is the title, How VR Content Creators Trick Your Brain Like Expert Magicians. And I thought this was a neat article. The author speaks to Stephen Macknick, who is the co-author of a book called Slights of Mind. And he spoke to him for insight into what VR content devs could learn from the neuroscience behind magic. And... There's several secrets, they call them secrets, things just bulleted points. And I'll give you an example of a couple of them. The first one, make mental arguments. So they're saying secret number one. And likens it to when you're in the audience at a magic show and the magician does the old levitating ball and your first thought is string. There's a string. Predicting that, the magician has his hula hoop moves it around the ball to prove that there is no string, which strengthens the illusion, right? It's that kind of stuff and how that applies to VR. And there's, like I said, there's six of these and they're all, they're all pretty neat. Uh, controlling attention with emotion is number three. Get somebody laughing and then immediately snap pivot to horror or despair. And it just makes the emotional moment that much more impactful, that much more dramatic. So uh, offer the illusion of choice is another, right? Uh, leading people into directions, but not making it like they're truly trapped in a linear <laughs> situation. So yeah, check out the link. There's a bunch more of those. Next up, and this is the uh, last story, has to do with traditional data visualization and how VR is poised to fix it. And they've got some really good examples. There's a data structure picture of every gene in a yeast species, okay? 
and it's uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the yeast. And you can see with traditional 2D graph kind of representation, it's really hard to look at the data. You'd have to really blow it up and literally have panels out to, you know, the ends of nowhere. What they show next is a picture of the human brain, this time a 3D representation. But even the 3D model, because of all the neural connections in the human brain, it's still really complicated. That's where VR comes in, the ability to zoom right in to maybe a lobe in the brain, a part of it, right? Medulla oblongata is the one for balance, I believe, if I'm remembering my uh, biology correct. But anyways, zooming into that in VR, kind of like Google Earth VR, and those connections scaled in to where you are. Suddenly the data becomes much more manageable, easier to present, easier to digest. So really, really good article that gets into a lot of those finer points and ends with some tools available, CalcFlow, to help mathematics students visualize calculus formulas. And it does that in VR by truly dumping it into virtual reality. Death tools, this one's a, a lot grimmer, but very impactful. What it does is it looks at Middle East conflicts and represents the number of deaths with actual body bag polygons. So if there were a thousand fatalities, there's a thousand body bags stacked up in this big warehouse. So it's a pretty macabre representation of, you know, the data. But like I said, impactful and definitely gets the point across a hell of a lot better than an Excel pie chart or bar chart ever would. All right, guys, that's it for the news tonight. As always, cheers. Definitely catch you on the VR flip side.